Thank you for the introduction. <clears throat> so on behalf of all my co-authors, I'm pleased to tell you about the Jasmine programming language. So when, if you could do me a favor and hold the mic because it's not going to record you properly without it. Thank you. So when implementing crypto, the programmer is often faced with several goals that might be conflicting. One of them is to write correct code. So we want to be sure that when uh, text is encrypted, we can decipher it. Or if we use program to check a signature, we want to be able to trust that signature. And since cryptography is nowadays pervasive, we want those implementations to be extremely fast. But this is not enough. We also want the implementation to be free of side channels, which means that an outsider looking at the execution of the program might not learn anything about the secrets that are manipulated by the program. So to do so, usually we resort to low-level languages like C. And C is convenient because it's, it's portable and it provides a lot of um, convenient software engineering abstractions like functions, abstract data types, and as was said in the talk before, um, it is good for code reviews and maintainability. However, we see there is little control over the assembly that is generated by the compiler, so the programmer for efficiency reason might resort to assembly languages. And in particular, with assembly, we get control over the instruction selection and instruction scheduling. So with Jasmine, our claim is that there is a gap in the programming language design landscape, and we try to, to fill it somehow with the Jasmine language. So Jasmine is, is a language that we have defined through its formal semantics, and then we have implemented a compiler that we proved correct within the Coq Prof Assistant. And on top of this, we build a couple of tools for automatically check some important properties of Jasmine program, namely memory safety and the absence of side channels. So let me start by briefly presenting the language. So this is a kind of hello world of Jasmine. It is not going to print anything, but it's a, a simple program that we may want to write. So it's doing constant time swapping. So it takes as argument two arrays of value, um, x and y of size n, where n is a global parameter, and a Boolean swap. And this function, depending on the value of swap, will either return its input and change or swapped. And this is implemented in constant time, which means that the exact sequence of instructions that will be executed does not depend on the values of any of the arguments. So let's, let's go through the code. So this function will do something of, on every cell of the arrays. So there is a for loop for every such cell, and it will first read the data from arrays x and y, do some bit level manipulation, and then write back to x and y. And depending on the value of swap, it will write the same values or the values swapped. So what we can see on this example is that even though each instruction in the source program corresponds to one instruction at the assembly level, the programmer can use convenient variable names. There is a global parameter, which means that we can write this function once for any size of the arrays, even though um, we will use it for some particular sizes. And in Jasmine, there is this ability to use arrays. And loops, and an interesting point here is that even, even though this piece of code is critical and might be in line every time we need to do this kind of swapping, 
we can write it in a function, and since this function will be in line, the programmer can decide whatever calling convention they find convenient. So here, this function takes as argument arrays and returns several values, which themselves are array, but this will all disappear after the compilation. So let's see another example. So in the previous one, we had some high-level features of that Jasmine, but there are also very low-level ones. So the programmer is allowed to do whatever pointer arithmetic they like and access any memory address using this square bracket syntax. And also we make available at the Jasmine level instructions that are usually only available uh, at the assembly level. And so here the addition return and may take as argument a carry, and this carry is visible at the Jasmine level as a regular Boolean variable. And let's see a third example in the first one, there was a for loop. With the for loop, the programmer declares its intent that the loop be unrolled by the compiler. But this is not always a good idea, so the programmer can use a while loop when they want the loop not to be unrolled. And one thing which is crucial for performance is um, concerns spilling. So sp sometimes the, the the live data of a program cannot be stored in registers, and some of it must be stored in memory. And moving data from a register to memory is called spilling, and the programmer decides which data to spill and when, and the compiler will not take this kind of decision. So that was an illustration of the Jasmine language. So the, let me move to description of the compiler. So when designing the compiler, we had several goals in mind. And one very important one is the predictability of the assembly that is generated. So the programmer, when looking and writing its, its code, can know what assembly will be generated. But this is not enough. They also have the means to control what is generated. So if we are not satisfied with one particular implementation, we can rewrite at the Jasmine level to tweak the assembly generation. And despite this control over the low-level generated code, the language provides high-level abstractions, and we want them to be zero-cost. That is, there is no difference in performance between a program that uses the abstractions and a program that does not. And of course, we want the compiler to be correct, that is, to preserve the semantic of the source program. That's why we implemented the compiler in Coq and proved it correct. And also, we proved that the compiler preserves the constant time property, which means that if the source program is constant time, then the assembly program also is. So the compiler is rather simple, but involves many passes. So first, we unroll all the for loops and inline all function calls. And after that, it's good time to do some cleaning and perform some constant propagation and dead code elimination. And then we do some optimizations. One of them is sharing of stack variables. So if there are several variables that must be allocated to the stack that are not live at the same time, they will be allocated in the same stack slot. Then we replace the register arrays by usual registers, um, lower the instruction set, which means that each high-level instruction gets implemented by its corresponding low-level instruction. We do register location and then linearization, which means that the control flow is translated into a sequence of instructions with go-tos. And all of these passes are proved correct. So we prove each pass independently. And as you may know, when doing formal verification in Coq, the doing proofs can, can be tedious and difficult. That's why we use a technique called translation validation. So instead of directly proving the compiler, we implement a checker. This checker takes as input the program before and after the transformation and checks that the transformation 
has been done correctly. And we only prove the correctness of this checkout. And an interesting point in this work is that we could reuse a single checker for validating several passes. And here is the theorem of, of each pass. So if we have a program P that is compiled successfully into a program P prime, then for every function name F that is exported in P, which means it's, it's not an inline function of P, then if in program P we can execute the function F starting with arguments VA and initial memory M, and if this results in result VR and final memory M prime, then exactly the same may happen in the program P prime. There is just a side condition that there, there must be enough free memory in the initial memory to allocate the local variables of the compiled function. And an important point of the theorem is that it is suitable for separate compilation because it talks of the execution of a single function and not a, of a whole program. So that was for the correctness of the compiler, but there are other properties that are important for Jasmine programs. So the first one is memory safety. By memory safety, we mean that in a Jasmine function, every memory access has to be valid. We have no a priori knowledge of what is a valid memory access. So to do this verification, we require the user to annotate the program with a precondition that states um, in the initial memory what address ranges are valid. And to implement an automatic checker for memory safety, we, have, we translate the Jasmine program into an equivalent Daphne program. And then we can reuse the Daphne and Boogie infrastructure to automatically do this check. And as usual, this may require some loop invariance, so we allow the user to annotate loops with um, invariance about uh, valid memory. Another property that is important for Jasmine programs is constant time. Constant time means that no branching and no memory access depends on secret. And as before, we have no a priori knowledge about what is secret and what is public, so we require the user to annotate each function with a precondition that states which of the arguments are public. And anything that is not public is considered secret. And similarly, we translate the Jasmine program into, into Daphne and then Boogie. And at the Boogie level, we have implemented um, a verifier that, uh, that used the same technique at, as the CT verif tool that uh, checks for constant time for LLVM programs. So to summarize this section, we have built two tools for automatically checking important properties of Jasmine program, namely memory safety and constant time. And we have proved that the compiler preserves these properties. So it is sound to check them at the Jasmine level and assume they hold at the assembly level. An interesting point is that even though Jasmine is a brand new programming language, it was possible to reuse um, existing tool and state-of-the-art techniques to do this verification. And an important point is that what is difficult usually in checking automatically these properties is to understand what's going on with the memory and to understand pointer arithmetic. But in Jasmine, since we provide high-level constructions like arrays and for loops and no pointer arithmetic is allowed on arrays, then the verification is much simpler because the programmer use little uh, direct memory access. So finally, let me talk about uh, running Jasmine programs. So um, 
as I said, the Jasmine language can be used to implement libraries. And when compiled, the assembly that is generated is compliant with standard application binary interfaces. So a Jasmine library can be used in other programs written in, in various languages. So we have experimented with C, Camel, and REST. And one source of Jasmine programs we had comes from Chasm. So Chasm is a high-level assembly language that has been designed by Dan Bergstein, and which is very similar in spirit, at least, to Jasmine. So the translation from Chasm programs to Jasmine is, uh, could be easily automated. And the SuperCop infrastructure is an infrastructure to test and compare various crypto implementations. And fortunately, in this, in this infrastructure, there are many implementations of crypto primitives written in Chasm. So we took them and automatically translated them into Jasmine to uh, provide many test cases for our compiler. So here are some results of the measurements we have done. So for every of these Chasm programs that we have translated into Jasmine, we measured the execution time expressed in um, processor cycle counts. So what we can see is that in all cases, the execution time is very similar. But what is more interesting is the third line, X25519 for Lim Jasmine, which has no corresponding number for the Chasm implementation. So what is this program? It is doing some computation of an elliptic curve, and we have derived it from an original implementation in Chasm, generated a corresponding Chasm code, no, sorry, Jasmine code, and then rewrote slightly the Jasmine code to introduce high-level constructions and make the code more readable. And then, working on this readable version, we could easily try different versions of the same program by changing the instruction selection, the order of instructions, and the spilling strategy. And by doing this experiment, we finally found a version of the same program that, that is faster than all other available um, implementations. So to conclude, I've, we have designed a new programming language, Jasmine, and implemented a compiler for one architecture, x64, that we proved correct in Cox. We have automatic checkers for memory safety and constant time, and we know that the compiler preserves these properties. And currently, most of the Jasmine programs we have are derived from, Jasmine, from, from Chasm implementations. So there are lines for future work. So our first goal is to target more architectures, and in particular to target architectures with vector instructions. And also, as I mentioned in the beginning, one important property of crypto implementation is functional correctness. So currently, we have just a formal specification of the Jasmine semantics. And it would be nice to, to have more automatic tools to help proving the functional correctness or means to connect this semantics with existing tools. And also, we have to write more implementations of uh, primitives. So this concludes my talk. And I forgot to mention that the compiler and the language is open source and free, so can give it a try. Thank you. Hi. Uh, nice talk. Uh, I had a question about your verification story. So. You mentioned you translate to something like Daphne, and you expect programmers to add annotations. Now, would a programmer be able to 
correspond like the variables in the Daphne program to variables in Jasmine? Like how would they know about what kind of loop invariants to add and what kind of properties to write about these these variables? Yeah, this is a good question. Um, the notations that need to be provided by the programmer are expressed with respect to the Jasmine variables. And when translating, we try to preserve the variable names. So when looking at, at a goal in Boogie, we hope that we can understand where it can, comes from um, in Jasmine, but we have no principled way to to carry this kind of information. I see. So, so far, you haven't. Uh, this hasn't really been an issue for for your experiments. No. no okay. That's cool. Thanks. So, is Boogie uh, uh, proof at the, the generated program level or at the source code level? When doing the translation to Boogie, is from the source code level. So this enable to to build on the abstractions that are available at the source level. So the proof is at a source code level. Yes. Okay. But we know that the the compiler preserves these properties, so it makes sense to do the proofs uh, on the source code, where it's easier. Um, maybe I misunderstood, but you said you prove each function separately does that mean that you you don't do a proof of the whole thing in one piece or it, it does that fall out of proving them each separately what what do you call function uh, e each um crypto primitive i guess then yes we we prove every implementation separately than, than any other. But I, I'm not sure I, I follow. But okay. I, think, I think the question is that in the system, um, you write the specification at a function level. And then if it's a global property, I'm not sure you can write dummy functions and then with specifications maybe. If you write a, a dummy main function for endeavor, then prove correctness or other properties about that. Yes, each, each function you, you want to verify is annotated with precondition. So what, if you verify another function that calls that one, well, you will have a proof obligation that the precondition of the called function actually holds at the call side. So you're uh, verifying the source program uh, with uh, Buki and Daphne, if I understand correctly. But my favorite proof assistant is Coq. And since the whole compiler is in Coq, uh, would it be, I guess it would be simple to uh, verify source program's correctness in Coq. And do you do that? Yes, you definitely can do that. But it's not automatic. And I believe it's very hard. I mean, the... Pre previous talk was exactly about verifying implementations. So, um, yes, you, the semantics is written in Coq, so you you can um, apply usual techniques to, to prove correctness um, of the source program uh, directly in Coq. But uh, I, I wish you good luck. <laughs> With code, not only um, you prove at source code level, it will be the um, the program can be extracted automatically, and, and the problem will hold on the generated program, right? Or camera program. Can, can you repeat, please? So uh, when I mentioned when you mentioned that the, the proof is at at the code level, um, what I'm saying is that the proof is actually preserved to. Uh, um, the generate program level, um, which in this case would be OCAM. No, it's assembly. The compiler produces assembly out, out of the Jasmine source. 
Right, right. In your system, what I mean in Cook's case. Right, so in, in your system, um, actually, the probably holds at assembly level, but in Cook's system, um, it proves correct at generated or camera level, right? I don't understand what 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 generated OCaml you refer to. So in in, in Coke you have uh, um, you have the specification and also computation in the same system, and then eventually you can it's true that you can extract the computation into a program. Um, the uh, the proof is against that extract the program, right? Yes, the, the compiler is implemented in Coq. The proof of correctness of the compiler is done in Coq too. But the compiler itself, before it is executed, is compiled uh, into na native code. And there the, the proof is, is erased. But if we trust the Coq Proof Assistant and the OCaml compiler, then the, the correctness guarantees we have proved for the compiler um, in Coq um, holds for the, the actual bi binary that runs. But right, we yeah. have no yeah. formal guarantee of that, but it's right. how Coq is usually used. I'll ask a final question. Um, how do you compare your language to uh, uh, F star? Well, F star is is a very general purpose language for uh, doing any kind of programming and verification. So, yeah, I I, I would wouldn't compare J Jasmine to F star. They they are completely different goal. I, specifically, Jasmine is much more focused. We want it to be a programming language for implementing cryptographic primitive. So, Sorry, my question was very, not very clear. Very specific goal. So uh, what I'm asking is the uh, F-star subset that uh, um, Jin just pre pre presented uh, for crypto system. How do you compare these two systems? Any um, pros and cons? And indeed, they, the two have uh, similar goals, but we have sort of a, a different approach. We, we first focus on, on the language and on the experience of the programmer and not on the um, verification task of functional correctness. And currently, we, we don't have a good story for the verification of functional properties of Jasmine programs, but we believe the, the language is more suitable for for cryptographers to actually implement the their codes in it. Very nice work. Yeah, so it's just, okay. I think, um, like low store and F store are good for reference implementations at the moment, but it cannot be competitive with assembly code. So uh, I think what Jasmine uh, achieves is that you can actually verify that at least your assembly code uh, well, falls within certain security guarantees. And then there's the question of uh, how can we bridge the gap between like the kind of uh, functional correctness we can express in a higher level language like Epstar and, and what they have at the Jasmine level. But as uh, Vincent said, um, like using Coq for that, for instance, is difficult. So there's still some work to do. But at least like they are faster than we are and uh, we are maybe more portable. Yes. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, very nice work. Uh, thank you. Let's uh, think of speak again.